It does not take a rocket scientist to understand that girths have an influence on a horse's movement. Girth tightness versus saddle stability has always been an issue. A looser girth equals better movement of the horse, but also allows movement of the saddle, which causes all sorts of musculoskeletal problems. The big question is, where can the girth exert pressure on the horse's body to stabilise the saddle whilst minimising the negative effect on the gait? Looking at the horse's anatomy, the girth lays over the sternum and both deep pectoral or ascending pectoral and rectus abdominis muscles. So where does a girth actually apply the most pressure? Many people think that a girth exerts the same pressure inwards to the horse all the way round. This is not the case. If we think of a horse's ribcage as the same shape as an egg, we can illustrate that the girth will exert the most pressure where the circumference of the ribcage is greatest. In other words, the top and bottom of the egg. The egg analogy. Here's our sternum of our horse in blue. Either side are our pectoral muscles, ascending pectoral muscles. And if we go to the, the side, we can see we can get our toothpick, which we're using as a gauge, and we can lift quite easily away. Whereas if we go to the top and we try and lift away, you can see it's having a tough time because the amount of pressure that the band is exerting on the sternum is greater because the circumference is greater. So where you will have the greatest pressure of a girth is on the sternum, maximum, and then either side until we start to get the verticality in the rib cage, and then because the circumference is less, we hardly have any pressure. The sternum of the horse is a stable bony structure, which is a better place to exert pressure from the girth than the muscle structures either side of it. Applying pressure to the muscles impedes their ability to function. Like many companies, we have been looking at how girths affect performance of horses. There have been numerous approaches taken with shaped or anatomical girths, padded, elasticated, non-slip, silicon, donuts, you name it, someone's tried it. We're always experimenting with different ideas at our facility in Kent, where we have our own horses, saddle fitting training center, stables, indoor arena, and the WOW factory. This means we can turn around an idea quickly, test it both subjectively on our horses and scientifically using pressure testing equipment. We have pressure tested numerous styles of girth and evaluated the horse's way of going. And from these studies, we have developed a concept of elevating the girth away from the ascending pectoral muscles and rectus abdominis using a padded sternum plate to bear weight and alleviate pressure on the musculature either side of the sternum. This proved to give consistently good results, both with pressure testing and subjectively assessed ridden work. We have chosen the route of increasing freedom of movement by negating pressure on the regions of the horse that need to move. The concept was to radically change the girth construction into something that had a superstructure that would work like a tree in a saddle. In doing this, we elevate the straps of the girth away from the sternum so there would be no contact of the straps until they met the sides of the horse. At the time, we didn't know if this radical step would cause saddle instability increase pressure on the sternum, or make saddle slip easier. As it turned out, we needn't have worried. From the first try, it became evident that horses were opening the stride and interestingly, also using their backs like they hadn't done before. We mounted a camera under the horse off the rigid sternum plate 
so you can see how the ascending pectoral muscles work unimpeded. The free space girth has a tree-like structure which is totally inflexible and holds the straps in place. The rigid sternum plate is then spaced away from the horse by the active sternum pad, a 40mm thick pad that can expand and contract with the expansion and contraction of the ribcage of the horse. This active pad does away with the need for elastic in the girth system, which we feel is detrimental to saddle stability. The reinforced standard plate comes in a standard and slim width, dependent on the width of the rib cage and forelimb spacing at the girth groove. The straps can be long or short, dressage, with double or single buckle guards that can also be padded, and these provide even greater space and and alleviation of pressure. So what about saddle stability? The worry of instability was soon overcome when it became apparent that as long as there was contact at the sternum, the grip that was achieved by the girth was comparable with any other girth. Any girth not done up sufficiently allows movement. Mounting from one side, etc., was not a problem. Obviously care should be taken to ensure the sternum plate does sit centrally on the sternum of the horse, but this is not onerous. Could the saddle slip to one side easier? Our findings and those of our fitters have been very interesting in this regard. This girth has highlighted rib cage asymmetry that is not always easy to spot or quantify. We are now convinced that saddle movement or slip is influenced by how the girth is forced to sit on an uneven barrel of a horse's ribcage. Effectively having only one point of contact at the sternum minimises the influence of the asymmetric ribcage on the girth and therefore the saddle movement or slip caused by this girth distortion. There are obviously other factors that affect saddle slip such as the saddle itself rider's weight distribution, as well as the horse's soundness, but improvements have been subjectively noted when just changing the methodology of girthing. What did it do to the pressures under the girth? When we measured the pressures under the girth, it proved that the straps were indeed not in contact, but better still, the pressure achieved under the areas that touched the horse had not increased from what one would have expected from a normal type of girth when compared to some girths, the pressure had decreased. This comparative testing was carried out using con controlled conditions, tightening the girth using a spring balance scales to ensure the girth tightness was the same for any girth tested. We hope that this short presentation has given you food for thought. And it's not just a saddle that can influence the performance of the horse and that the type of girth is a huge factor as well. For more information on how horses can be helped with girth sensitivity and ridden gait abnormality, please contact Wales Saddles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>